I am the king of the night howlers. You and your black eagles, you dare to touch the head of a sharp sword with your bare hands. You must bleed for it. <laughs> so you see. It is Sulabi. Oh my God! Cut. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Olua Tosinaino, and I'm also known as the Corporate MC. Yes, I'm an event host, and I host events in the most remarkable way. I'm a student at Obafemi Miawolowo University. My name is Joseph. I am an assistive, and I'm a graduate of the Obafemi Miawolowo University. Basically, I'm a visual artist a stuntman, a guitarist, and a poet. Okay, I was the stunt director and storyboard artist. So, I was contacted some time ago by the DOP, that's also director of photography, and when he reached out to me and shared the scripts, man, I loved it. Number one, because I've seen some of his works before, I think I've seen two of his works before, and I know that it's always amazing. So I was really excited that I was going to be on a you know movie production like this i'd been on a um a set before but the set was um it was a skit it was a skit not a short movie production so this was i mean the first time i was going to be in that kind of production and then the fact that i was playing the role of the antagonist now where most people know it as boss so it was really exciting for me and trust me i felt that it was a big shoe to be filled because when I first heard about the character that I was going to be portraying, uh, that was the King of the Night Owlers. I, when I look at myself, when you know me on a normal day, I'm a very sweet, loving, jumping around person. And King is a more collected, badass, you know, fearful character. So it took me a lot of internalization, you know. I remember very well, sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night and look into the mirror and, you know, just start rehearsing like a bad guy you know i keep making gestures i just look at the mirror and, you know and also that I, I started taking time out to look at pay attention to people who i think are in that category you know we know some of those people in the society so i want to observe them i want to see how do they behave how do they portray themselves it was really challenging and i remember that on the day of the production itself I and yes, I don't know if I I don't know if I ever even said this, but I had to work out at some point because at that particular point in time I was already having tendency of pot belly, small small. <laughs> so I had to every in the morning. It was not I didn't go to the gym, but every morning I, I was consistent. You know, press up. I was doing press up every morning and sit ups just to make sure that the tummy of the bad guy does not look like a pregnant a pregnant woman. Then on the day of the production itself it was it was actually demanding in all my life you know in all my life all my existence i've never tasted cigarette before you know the the highest i've done remember we just wrote paper and put matches and that was how as primary school so when i was told i was going to be smoking cigarette on stage uh, Yes, and I'm going to mention that too, yeah, on screen rather. And prior to then, I'd, like I said, it was my first actually serious production. I'd been used to stick drama and that uh, posed a challenge because there was there, there's some technique we use in, in stage drama that is not that we don't use when we're recording a movie. You know, the, tone, the, 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 the tone of my voice, the stress, you know, in, in when you're acting on stage is more mechanical you say stuff like and i will not let you sit by while i sit around <laughs> but in action it has to be quite really real and believable okay rolling camera Sorry. i am the king of the night howlers i have never said action oh, still rolling action okay at first i was scared at the same time i was honored to see a lot of like powerful people, a lot of respective and esteemed people being in the same, like in the set with me. So I was honored by the director himself, Mr. Ife, to have called me to like direct the stunt in his movie. So I did not take it lightly. So it was one of the reasons why I took the role. Number two, again, um, the frustration. I was frustrated 
trying to like organize the people it was a hard thing for me but at the, in the at the long run i just you know try to manage myself there's a quote that i used to like push myself they say with great power comes great responsibility speed up action In fact, truth be told, the first person I turned to when I was giving the script was Holy Spirit, actually. I turned to God for help because I knew I could not portray it. In fact, to me, I had already done some my own. And then when I got to say, I realized that I could not portray that character on my own. It was very obvious because the director kept telling me that the system that I know or that I got used to were old techniques and they wanted something that was genuine. So and having to portray that, I just, I, in fact, <laughs> several times I were on set, I'm not sure anybody noticed this, I would withdraw and just, you know, before they say camera rolling went out, there was a particular scene where I come from the shadows. Every time I go inside That's that dark shadow, I would always pray in tongues. Really? I say, God, help me, help me, help me portray this properly. There's, there's, there's a kind of delivery that is needed for this. And I know it is only you, you own my body, and this is your temple, so you're capable of, expressing that that I need to express at the moment now and 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 that required a lot and then several times where i was on set i had to be praying just to make sure that i don't get carried away in the old theatrics and all that and i understand the value of what is being done that we're trying to actually reach out to the souls of men that the fight the battleground is the souls of men and it's the lord's business so it's quite important that we take it from that perspective from c again See, those are members of your cop gang. Still and rolling, see, still rolling. Bend down the mop. See, so that we'll see your face. Because this is what we are using for the see. Okay. Several times, director would say, Cut, no, you are taking this like you are on a stage. You have to be like, and ah, it, it, it really broke me. It made me, you know, forget all the things that I'd gotten used to from steak drama from acting on stage over the years, theater art and all that. So I had to now start being, imagine myself that, okay, Tosin, you are actually a bad guy now. You are no longer Tosin, you are a king of the night owlers. I am the king of the night owlers. You and your black eagles, you get to touch the edge of the sword with your bare hands. Again. You must bleed for it. Again. I'm the king of the night owlers. With the secrets. Yeah, you that that's more I am not concentrating on the smoke. I know those things. Don't get me vexed. I saw the need for it and I needed to change the impression that uh, people have towards the Nigerian movies. Just imagine, how can you watch an action film, a Nigerian film now, and you see someone being shot with no blood effect. Imagine someone being shot with a lot of fire coming out of the gun and no, uh, the actions are not realistic. So I needed someone like to view the Nigerian industry again in a different and perfect way. Okay, fair. Still rolling. Yeah. So, bring the gun down. So. Uh. Action. Shoot. Down. Down. It affected everything I do when I'm not even on set, when I'm not, sorry, when I'm not um, on screen, when I'm behind the camera, I'm rehearsing, I'm talking to the wall, I'm beating up myself, I'm, you know, self-encouraging, what they call it, I'm motivating myself, self-motivation. Then fast forward, even before the end of the whole production, I, I, I learned a lot. There was a particular time too that while I was... I saw the need for what we're doing. I saw that there were people that this is actually their life. You know, having to live that kind of life for 10, 15, one hour was quite challenging for me. And I imagine that this is the kind of routine some people go through on a daily, steady, consistent basis, having to look over their shoulders to make sure nobody was coming to shoot them at the back. I mean, it was just a set. And while we were in the bush, I was even scared, like, hope nobody will shoot me, hope nobody will, you know, and then I remember having to undo, undo, uh, undo the guns too, because the guns were quite real, to the, as, as best as they can be. 
you know they were quite rude so having to undo them was was quite challenging and i remember that there was a particular scene i was supposed to shoot somebody and you know when you shoot there's a recoil there's a recoil effect that it gives you and and all those things it was quite a mind-blowing experience you know having to know how when you shoot somebody how does he really feel and things like that and all that then i think also for me i watching everybody really imputes their effort on set the the cast most especially now it was something that really influenced me i saw how people portrayed the characters in in the most genuine way the the, the portrayed characters they're meant to portray it made it easier for us to to you know get into character i mean everybody was amazing everybody was amazing all right the best moment for me the bull's eye for me was when king was shot so since I directed the stunt, he was shot three times. Wow. One on the right, left shoulder, the right, wow. then the middle. That moment then, he reflected wow. back to when his mom was advising him to accept Jesus Christ and live a wow. holy life. So that moment got me, it was the feeling of the movie for me. So how it has impacted my life, personally, <laughs> there were quite some outstanding lessons that Booz has taught me, personally, looking at the project again. I see that you know, while we were shooting the movie, it looked here and there, you know, in pieces and all that. But when the work was done, it was so amazing. And the Lord is it to minister to me that when he's working on our lives at times, we don't see the big, bigger picture. We don't see how everything comes together. We just seems to be like we keep repeating some things, you know, like the, the director will say, cut from the top. And it seems like we keep going around in circles. But it's not circles. God is bringing out amazing pieces from all those experiences. Because when the work came out together, it ministered to me, especially the message of how we are all connected and how different part of our lives God is using it in colorful bits too and that ministered a whole lot to me so I carry that along with me throughout lockdown and even after lockdown to know that God is I'm a work in progress like the project I was a, I'm, a, I'm a work in progress and every step of the way God is bringing out beautiful beautiful amazing um, amazing outcome okay truth be told um, when I worked on the project, a lot of people saw me. I remember in church people that I did not even know would watch it. I remember one man in, um, at that particular point in time, there was a church I was attending because of lockdown. The church that I was attending before I could attend because we were not holding services. So a man dead, I didn't even know him. Just talked to me. I was like, I saw a movie. Ah, you really smoke cigarettes in that movie? Wow, well, you did a good job, blah, blah, blah. And the man was just, the man said he was brilliant. And also, it, it took the help of God trying to uh, maintain because I kept telling myself that it, this is not just for me. It was not a me thing. So for every time I want to, my head to expand and do you know the honesty was very easy. I was not even being humble. You know when you do a very, very, very good work and you know that you did a very, very good work, you might be proud. But I knew that what I did was not my strength. Because every point in time behind the scene, people kept shouting, cut. And then I knew how I had to pray and beg Holy Spirit, pray, Jomai, Jojo, Timi, Eje, Shanumi. So by the time the work came out, people were like, you did, I was like, eh, me. So I could not even be proud. I couldn't. Honestly, I would just say, ah, glory to God. I remember everybody kept saying, no, I acted it so. In fact, there was one of my friends that is a critic. So when I sent it to her, I was expecting her to say, eh, it was manageable. He was quite good, but she was like, oh my God, he was quite, you did well. And she was asked like, eh? I said, oh God, this is to you, because me, I know what I was capable of. So I think remembering that it was God that helped me execute the, the characters and portray them well. Okay, my parting word is, okay, no matter what we are doing, no matter what we are doing, no matter where we are, wherever we go, we should always do what we are doing diligently. We should be nice to people, we should like try and associate with people, we should try and push ourselves because we don't know where we are going to like go tomorrow. Yes, let me tell you, let me start from the number one first things first. You have to subscribe now, subscribe and hit the notification button because we're going to be rolling out some juicy stuff. Trust me, they've sent me another script. Hey, hey, and this is so so. See, if you've seen Booz Eyes, Booz Eyes is like seven out of 100 for what we're about to work on now i'm not, I'm not even trying to I'm, I'm being sincere it's seven it's a full movie and it's going to be very amazing trust me we are already doing the underground work so please subscribe our red production is an amazing 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 company that anybody will be privileged to work with and booze is the production that was very privileged and humbled to be part of thank you very much 
My name is Steve Joseph. I am an Aziz again. And if you have not watched the movie, please go and watch it. It really got me when I watched it in the room. Like, like I was screaming. It was so powerful. So if you have not watched it, go and do that now. So ladies and gentlemen, from wherever you are watching from around the country, if you've not seen the movie Bo's Eyes, and if you have seen the movie and you've not encouraged others to see it, please kindly do so now. Tell people to subscribe, tell them to like, and tell them to see the movie Bo's Eyes.